All right, I want to uh, kind of maybe give you a little example or two uh, with some of these right triangles, just in case maybe you're, you know, struggling or uh, not quite understanding what you should be doing. So uh, let's first just look at a triangle here. Okay, and again, I'm not the best artist in the world. Um, and, you know, these triangles go along with the trigonometry section of your homework. <clears throat> and you've got your three sides. Now, let's say that we're given angle B. And it's 53.5 degrees. And side C is 24.5. Now, the key to uh, working in, with the trigonometry is to first choose your angle of reference. Now, I'm given angle B, but I automatically know angle A because the angle A is 90 minus 53.5. So angle A would be 36.5 degrees. Okay, so now I am at liberty to reference either angle I want to. So let's just go with angle B in case, you know, you didn't do that first. But I always find the angle, other angle once I know one of them. So let's just say we're referencing angle B. So if I reference angle B and I know side C, then I can either find side A or side B. So this is the process you have to go through, you know, as you choose the correct trigonometry function. So let's say I want to find side A. So remember, I am referencing angle B. I know side C, I want to find side A. So based on that information, I'm using angle B, side A is my adjacent side, side C is my hypotenuse, so therefore, I must choose the cosine function to where cosine of B is A over C. Okay, so you, you don't choose the trig equation first. You reference an angle, go by whatever side you know or side you know, and then choose your appropriate trig equation. Okay, now I'm going to substitute what I know. So I know angle B is 53.5, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a proportion, okay? So here is a step where I think, you know, can mess you up as far as being off decimal points, um, rounding too much. So you can, you know, when you deal with these sine, cosine, tangents, you need to keep your answers to about three or four decimal places uh, because the, the more you, the earlier you round, then your final answer is going to be off and that's going to make everything be off just a little bit. And so therefore, in your answers, they're going to count them wrong often and they theoretically could be right. But the best way to do this, you know, if I cross multiply here, You know, A times 1 is A. And then I just take 24.5 cosine 53.5. Now, depending upon your calculator, sorry about that, um, depending upon your calculator, you may have to enter things a little bit different. So it all depends upon what kind of calculator you have. So if I do 53.5 cosine times 
I get 14.57. And then if I'm rounding that to either whatever they're asking for, three significant digits or one decimal place or whatever, that would be 14.6. So, you know, if I rounded this too early, like if I went ahead and found the cosine of 53.5, and it gives me, let's see here, 0.5948, and if I rounded that to like 0.6, my answers are going to be off just enough, okay? So if you do want to go ahead and find the cosine, sine, or tangent of your angle, go to at least four decimal places, or just do your cross multiplying, okay, like we did here. I forgot to put my arrow there. But do your cross multiplying, and then just take the side times the sine, cosine, or tangent of the angle, and that'll be as precise as you'll get, and you won't have to worry so much about rounding, okay? So that's finding the one side. Now, if I have to find the remaining side, which is side B, I'm doing I'm doing the Pythagorean theorem, okay, uh, because that's the quickest and easiest way to do it. So remember that B is the square root of C squared minus A squared. So B is the square root of 24.5 squared minus 14.6 squared. So again, a lot of this... Uh, your answers may be off just depending upon how, you know, the people that created these questions calculated things and how we calculate them. So, but they shouldn't be off too much. Now, on tests, it's not going to matter because I will adjust those. Homework, I don't uh, go through everybody's homework and look at every question. Uh, so you can always redo them. Or if you're really thinking it's a, it's a problem, you can just shoot me an email. And I will look at it and correct it if I have to. But at any rate, if I do the Pythagorean theorem here, so if I take 24.5 squared minus 14.6 squared, I get the square root of 387.09. So B is the square root of 387.09. Go ahead and take the square root of that. And I get about 19.67. Get this paper up here. But since again, if we're rounding to one decimal point, that would end up being 19.7. Okay. So I'll give you a second to kind of catch up and copy that down. All right, and the, the other thing, you know, you can always do if you are, you know, wanting to, you know, see if your answers are correct, always remember that C should be your longest side, and that's 24.5. B, all right, since this angle B is larger than this angle A, then this side B should be bigger than side A, and it is, okay, because we got A was 14.6, B was 19.7, and so you know, opposite side, B, is opposite the bigger angle between A and B. All right, so these are all things that you can do to kind of check yourself. Um, but you need to follow these steps here. Uh, and I know people that make mistakes, students of mine that make mistakes with the trigonometry, they often choose the trig equation they want to use first. And then they end up just kind of making up numbers and, or putting in wrong numbers. Can't do that. You always reference your angle. Go by either if you know one or two sides and then choose your equation, which is kind of what I'm going to show you in this next example. And don't also, uh, don't go by the look of the triangle because they're just giving you 
one triangle. And so even though angle A looks smaller than angle B, it may not. You got to go by what's given to you with your information. Now, for this one here, for this example here, I know side B is 1.28, side C is 3.02, okay? So this is kind of what I know. I know this is 1.28, this is 3.02. So what I do automatically is I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem and find side A. Why not? Now, on your homework, they may ask you for angle A first. Okay, you can do that, uh, but you can just keep track of everything you know, then write it in. All right, but, you know, that's just what I do. So I know that A is the square root of C squared minus B squared. So it's 3.02 squared minus 1.28 squared. So 3.02 squared minus 1.28 squared, and I get 7.482. So then A is the square root of that, which is 2.735, okay? All right, and since these are all three significant digits or two decimal places. I'm going to round this to 2.74. And because five, since this number here to the right of three is five or larger, we add one to the three, which makes it the 2.74. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and find angle A. And the reason why I'm choosing uh, the angle A over B is just because I know all three sides, so it really doesn't matter which angle I choose to find. Um, and I know the adjacent side is 1.28. I know the hypotenuse is 3.02. So therefore, I do the cosine of A is A over C or excuse me, B over C. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, because that's my adjacent side. So my cosine of A is 1.28 divided by 3.02. And here again is where you don't want to round your final answer until you're done. So I take 1.28 divided by 3.02 and I get 0.4238. Okay, I'm rounding them to four decimal places. Now, we, another thing you can learn are chain calculations on your calculator because you can always take your uh, answer you've just entered and keep working with it without retyping things over again. But you don't have to. So calculators are a wonderful thing, but you got to know how to use them. Um, but anyway, if I want to find the angle, the other thing you always have to remember is you've got to remember to use the inverse trig function. Okay, that's how you find the angle. So I'm going to find cosine inverse of 0 0.4238. And I get 64.9 degrees. Okay. So, you know, depending on where they ask you to round to, if they want it the nearest whole number, you make it 65. If not, you leave it here. And so, therefore, if A is 64.9, B is 90 minus 64.9, which is 20. 5.1. So there you go. So there are your uh, different methods. One where we uh, had to find missing side given an angle and one where we had to find the angle knowing two sides. So, you know, 
hopefully this helps. Um, you know, I'm going to be sending out uh, more examples of the RC and RL circuits uh, probably next week or so. So in case you haven't gotten that far, uh, you can wait and look for them. If you are that far and you're struggling, then keep an eye out and maybe it'll help. So I hope you have a good day.